And I think bad deals are, are sort of like bad haircuts. Uh, it just takes forever for them to go away. You know, a bad haircut takes forever to, to grow back. And a bad deal is the foundation for all future deals, and they just seem to haunt you for the rest of your life. I don't like to work bad deals. And so I like to understand what I call the man. And I don't mean that from a chauvinistic standpoint, but to me, the man stands for money, authority, and need. Some would argue that, that those three criteria need to be present in order for a deal to be put together. Now I'm going to ask you a question. Of those three, which is the most important? The money, making sure they have money to fund your project, the authority, making sure you're dealing with a decision maker, or the time frame, the need. Which of those three is the most important? To, to me, selling is empathetically understanding the other person or company's pain or discomfort and then finding a way to relieve that or reduce that pain by providing your company's product or service. To me, a problem is an opportunity. Without problems, I'd have no business. But let me ask you, what's the definition of a close? So I'm, you, you know my background is sales, so what do you think my definition of a close is? Or give me an example of a close. Sealing the deal. Sealing the deal. That's a great answer. And that's correct. That clearly is a type of close. But to me, a close is any time we are asking a question. Because technically, we're closing for information. OK, so in summary, negotiations start before the first call. I strongly suggest to you never give anything up without getting something back in return. You don't want to be less than sincere about this, but um, in social situations, you might just want to try it once in a while. If somebody's asked you to do something for them that's going above and beyond, see if you can't ask for something in return, again, without being superficial about it. I think we always need to be on the hunt for the money, authority, and need. We've got plenty of time to waste our time chasing bad deals. Again, as it relates to money, authority, and need, to me the most important is the need. If they've got a, a burning need uh, for your product or your service, they'll find the money and they'll find the decision makers. If you must give something up, give it up in small pieces. And I suggest that you continually reinforce the value and cost, cost is always going to be an issue, but it won't be the primary factor from which people uh, base their decision. If you look at studies, cost is usually about sixth from the top. Support, um, product capabilities, how, how the product, enhancements to products and software, how often is there going to be a new upgrade? I mean, those are the things from which decisions seem to take priorities over cost. So again, don't let cost scare you. People are willing to pay, provided that you've communicated value. As a matter of fact, I think if you were to draw a graph where two lines intersect is where the deal comes together. And on a graph, those two lines are value and cost. And as value goes up, so should the cost. And shame on you if you aren't, aren't able to communicate enough value. Because where those two lines intersect, if you've communicated the greatest possible value, you should be able to get the greatest possible price for your product or service. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. I think we need to use upfront contracts and pre-commitments all the way through the sales negotiations or your campaign. Trial closes. I've tried to, to communicate a few trial closes with you this afternoon. Um, it would have been a little easier and I think a little more effective had I been able to look you in the eye and point to one or two of you in particular to get your attention on the trial closes. But hopefully you understand it. Ask for an opinion, not for a decision. Well, if there's anything in here that I believe is relevant and could serve you well, um, it's this one. Never leave any conversation or meeting without knowing exactly what the next step is. If you're interviewing for a job, I would not leave that interview without knowing what the next step is. Where do we go from here? What's the next step? 
Because if you do, and you aren't the person that's going to be hired, you haven't learned anything. And I suggest that any time you're interviewing for a job, you need to know how the people have perceived you, so that if you're doing something wrong, you won't do it again the next time. I wouldn't leave any conversation or meeting without knowing exactly what the next step is. And it's the simplest thing, where do we go from here? Or what's the next step? I think if you use quid pro quo, you'll so shorten your sales cycle and you won't be forced to give things away.